So on my last video, I mentioned the differences between luminosity and brightness. And I said that we have a video on it and, and I do, I made a video on it last year. Um, and I still got some questions about it. And I thought, well, all right, cool. The other video is fine. I, I felt like it still stands, but I want to show you guys another demonstration as well as show some methods to see luminosity and brightness independently. And gosh, you know, I I'm going to go into it a little bit more here, but why you might care about the differences is not usually for creative reasons. Um, most of the time, you know, if, if you want to do something creative, if it looks good, uh, that's all that matters. But when we're trying to like, I don't know, make a, an action that might be a little bit complicated because you need a series of steps or a panel, obviously, like we do, um, every now and then you might need something like that or it's just a good way to analyze an image. So it's more utility is my point. However, let's talk about that today. Here's an image. doesn't matter what we use and we can even use a color chart like we did in the other video, but let me show you the differences. Now we've talked about, or maybe you've seen it before, where if you get a hue and saturation adjustment layer out, okay, and take the saturation all the way down, you get a black and white image, you remove all the color information. And you might've been told that it's not exactly the same as actual luminosity. And that's true, it's ever so slightly different. Now in the last video, I didn't show a direct example, but we're gonna do that today. So I'm gonna take this desaturated version and flatten it. And then we don't need this desaturation layer, or rather the hue and saturation layer. We're going to call this mm, normal desat. That is, you know, the desaturation that a lot of people might do, that I do, that we've all done. All right, so now let's do actual luminosity. So for that, we're going to do a solid color. As long as it's a gray, it doesn't have any color information, I just tend to do it brightness at 50% as a matter of practice. Now you come over here and you switch it to color blend mode. All right, that is technically now luminosity. So we're going to flatten that as well. We don't need that layer. The only reason I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and do this, is because now, now we can actually see the differences toggling back and forth. Okay, so let's see the normal desaturation. There it is. And there's the luma. In other words, the desaturation effect from pulling luminosity data. As you can see, ever so slightly different. Here again, not the most useful thing for creative purposes, but just understand that they're different, okay? Now, we'll delete those. What about brightness? How do we get brightness? So there's a few different ways, but one of the easiest, honestly, pull out a black and white layer. You can use the default um, you know, uh, presets here and put maximum white. That's brightness, okay? That means that all the brightness is gonna be viewed literal, like just data, as opposed to luma or a simple desaturation. So we're pulling out color information in slightly different ways. The way we're interpreting that information, still we get a black and white image, but the way we're interpreting the information is uh, quote important. Again, it's more important for functions and for extractions and things like that, but less important for creative reasons. Now, how do we see the differences between luma and brightness? Okay, apart from toggling them back and forth, one way to try to explain it is like I did in the other video, is that luminosity, is based on human perception of brightness when it comes to certain colors. Okay, I'll, I'll refer back to the old video again. When you see like a blue versus a yellow, assuming that, you know, uh, everything else is relatively the same. In other words, the, the brightness and all that is relatively the same. Saturation is relatively the same. Blue appears darker than yellow to the human eye. Okay, even if their brightness and saturation levels are the same. Now, one demonstration that we can do to actually see that is as follows. So let's go again, hue and saturation. We're gonna go to colorize, okay? And we're gonna put the saturation around 50. Let's just put it around 50, it doesn't entirely matter. Now the hue angle, blue happens to be 240 hue angle. So that's blue, which for most people, it looks a little bit purple and I don't know how the video end up looking, but this is what's regarded as blue most of the time in the hue angles of zero to 359. So 240 is blue. All right, pretty straightforward. What if we were to take, mm, let's go ahead and take our solid color, make it the gray again. Again, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna make it 50% gray. And then I'm gonna put it on color. Now that is the luminosity. That's the perception of it, okay? So what happens, since all we're doing is colorizing, we're making all the pixels one color. What happens if we go from the 240 to 60, okay? That's yellow. We have not technically changed anything in terms of the brightness or the saturation. We just simply changed the hue. Let's look at the brightness. Excuse me, the luminosity. So as you can see, it's quite different. We can do that actively by going back to that layer from, two, from 60 to 240. It's obviously darker. So as you move, I mean, every single 
luminosity perceives a little bit different. It perceives a little bit different. Purple a little brighter, blue a little darker, cyan bright, green a little darker, and yellow really bright, and back to red sort of in the middle. That is why luminosity works the way it does to try to help sort of complement and reflect and, and replicate human perception of luminosity or the brightness of a color, the perceived brightness of a color. So let's go ahead and put it back on 240. Okay. We've acknowledged that if we go to yellow, it looks brighter, even though we're not doing anything except the hue shift. All right. So let's get rid of our luminosity creator and let's put what I showed you a minute ago, black and white layer, maximum white. This is our brightness data now, right? So if I go back to my hue and saturation and start shifting the hue, nothing changes. Nothing changes because now we're, we're viewing, if you will, we're extracting just the luminosity data. Excuse me, the brightness data. I can do this. Been a slow morning. Sorry. Okay. We have just the brightness data. So no matter what we change the hue around, and mind you, we are changing the hue just to be clear. We are. And although our eye still sees blue as darker than yellow ish. Okay. When we go and add that, we notice when we add our black and white brightness layer, we notice that the hue shift does absolutely nothing. Okay, so what does that mean? So using brightness or rather just needing brightness data has different purposes. It, it mostly has to do with like image decomposition for various reasons. Again, I've done it for some actions. We occasionally do um, on some processes in our panels. It's more of a utility thing it, for most artists, including myself. That's just a grayscale black and white monochrome image and it looks great. However, it just happens to be the exact data. And again, we can turn that off. Okay, and we can put our color back on 240 as our baseline our darkest perceived color. And then we can put the solid color again of gray. I'm always do 50%, put it on color. And then now, now the hue affects how dark it looks because it's perceived brightness, perceived luminosity of each hue. But if I turn that off and put on the black and white, which is of course maximum white, or brightness, then it doesn't make a difference at all of the hue. So that's kind of like the main, main difference. In fact, before I go, in case you haven't seen the other video, let me put up a color chart and let's go ahead and do some tests on that because I just want to reiterate that point. Let's get a color chart. Okay, here we go. One of many type of color charts that we can make. It just shows the full spectrum of the hue angles and then they go up to white and they go down to black. Everything is maximum saturation, but we can still get a basic idea of what's happening here. So let's go back to what we did. Solid color, adjustment layer, put it on 50%. I don't know why I always do it, guys. 50% and put it on color blend mode. Now on color blend mode, as you can see, this is the luminosity. Remember I mentioned blue is perceived as darker. Blue is darker and yellow is perceived as brighter. Now, if we go to our black and white adjustment layer, once we go to maximum white, it's pure white, of course, except for the black down below. OK, because that obviously is darker, right? That's literally darker because we're adding black pixels to it and not black pixels. That's a lie. But we're adding brightness data to it. OK, the white just blends off. So there's no difference here, but there is difference here because this is luminosity data, which allows, like I said, it's a human perception of color darkness because technically this is all the exact same brightness and saturation right across the middle. It's all the same. But we do see yellow as brighter, especially in the context of blue. So it does look brighter, even though it's the same uh, information. So on luminosity, that's reflected. And on brightness, it is not. I hope that makes sense. And again, I want to make it clear just one more time. Why you might care about the differences has more to do with utility reasons. I'm not saying it's useless, but understand that. Do, do I don't, I don't want to throw this term at you, but do more research. <laughs> look on YouTube, look around. You can start really digging into color science. I always am. I, I wouldn't call myself an expert. I always am. But when I started realizing why we might want brightness versus why we want luminosity um, for different functions, I was like, oh, that makes sense. And it just gave me a little bit of a better understanding um, of the color science behind it. I am definitely a neophyte at color science, but it's something that we really like to learn about here, um, my partners and I, when it comes to developing tools for NBP. But this kind of stuff can also be interesting in how you create your own tools, not just panels, I mean, but like actions and different processes and things like that. But it's also just kind of fun, give you a better understanding of how all this stuff works. So I hope that clears it up. Any questions, please leave a comment below.